If you don't know how to make a sauce, you're in big trouble in the kitchen. It's the number one thing that you must learn and need to know as a chef. Uh, it doesn't matter how good your meat is, doesn't matter how well you've cooked it. It's not hard to make a wonderful, beautiful, perfect sauce. It just takes a little time and you have to start with the right ingredients and you have to follow the proper steps. There's always a rule associated with a, with a sauce. One, two, three step, that's what you have to follow. I think that the most important thing I ever learned when becoming a professional chef was how to make a sauce properly. Veal bones are going to be the first thing that I add to my roasting pan, which are going to go in the oven. And this is the basis of my brown sauce or veal glass. Right into the oven to roast at a low temperature Number one rule when you're roasting bones is low and slow. Slow and steady wins the race. You want caramelization. All the sugars around the meats are going to caramelize on the bones. There's actually more flavor in these bones than there is in any piece of meat you'll have. There's also gelatin, which is going to provide the thickness in the sauce. Next, another important step is mirepoix. Carrots, celery, onions, leeks. These go in. They get roasted slowly also. The mirepoix can go in after the bones because it doesn't take as long to get really nice caramelization on it. This is going to go in until it's nice and caramelized. And when it comes out, oh look at that, it's perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Nicely brown bits. The caramelization on the vegetables is actually a sweet flavor. Claudia, can you bring over that stock pot? Yes, yeah, chef. A sweet flavor that I need. I'm just going to déglacé here. Déglacé means deglaze. Scraping up all of the good brown bits at the bottom of the pan here. I'm just going to do this with water. You can do it with wine. Water's here. It's sort of the easiest thing. Give it a little scrape. Make sure that I bring all of the Nice brown, crispy bits from the bottom of the pan up. And this is also going to provide great flavor and great color to my sauce. Now this is just the beginning. This is just a veal stock. This will become veal glass. And it's the saucier's best friend. Becoming a saucier in a restaurant is probably the most coveted position. You know, it's sort of what every apprentice wants to be when they, you know, grow up, so to speak in the kitchen. These veal bones are going to be covered with water. And simmer at a low heat with a bouquet garni. This is what the green of the leek is used for. Parsley, thyme, a little bit of rosemary's in there, black peppercorns, a bay leaf. On low simmer, This is what it starts out like, and this is what it's finished like. All these impurities on the top of this stock are going to have to be skimmed off. Skimming is a very, very, very important step. If there's one thing that you cannot omit from making a perfect veal stock is skimming off the impurities. It's, it's all these impurities that are going to cloud your stock, a low, slow simmer is going to provide you with a beautiful, clear stock in the end. It's going to be perfect once it becomes the reduction sauce. It's not difficult to have veal stock frozen in cubes in your freezer, or veal glass. It's super easy. If you can put together a veal stock, have it ready to go, reduce it. Once it's reduced, it gets really gelatinous. You can cut it into cubes, wrap it into plastic wrap, put it in your freezer, and when you need it, you just pull it out. That stuff will last in there for a few months. And it doesn't take a lot of effort to go that extra step to get a better quality product, 
You don't have to use the thickeners, you don't have to use the flour or the cornstarch. It's all about reduction and it's all about concentrating the flavors. And at home, it's not something that's out of reach. I'm just taking the remainder of the impurities off the top of my veal stock. This has been simmering for about five or six hours. It's a beautiful, rich color, and it's ready to be strained. This has great flavor. All of the flavor's been extracted, and it can't cook too long because you don't want to make your stock cloudy. Claudia and I are gonna have a little veal facial here with all the steam that's coming off. Okay. Now this veal stock is going to metamorphosize into this black gold veal glass. This is reduced veal stock. That's all it's done. It's simmered very slowly over a very low heat for a very long time. It also has not boiled. This is how thick and gorgeous this sauce is. I have three reductions in pans. Reductions are how sauces are made now in a modern kitchen. And nowadays there's no artificial thickeners or starches used to thicken the sauces. We just depend on the gelatin in the bones from veal, um, chicken also. And now I'm going to make three very basic easy sauces from my veal stock. Orange juice and shallots have reduced in this pot. In this pan, I have shallots and reduced port. And in this pan, shallots and reduced Cabernet Sauvignon wine. The shallots are very important, as is the quality of the wine or the liquid that you're using. They're imparting some great flavors here. And I'm going to put a little bit of orange zest into my orange sauce. Not too much, just a little bit to add a little extra flavor and quartered calamirna figs. These are going to swell in the sauce. They're going to flavor the sauce. You're gonna get little bits of, uh, of the seeds from the figs in there. A Little bit of extra crunchy texture. And some grainy mustard is going into this Cabernet reduction. Get a little whisk. Now these are going to reduce just a slight bit. That sauce that I have, my veal glass, can be used as sauce. I'm just sort of stepping up the level here and adding a few more flavors, making it a little bit more complex. And I'm going to finish only the one with the orange with a little bit of butter. This is a Monteo Burr. Hard butter, just whisked in or swirled in. You don't necessarily have to use a whisk. And it finishes the sauce. It imparts a little bit of a richness, a better mouth feel. And then I'm ready to, to use my sauces to finish my plates. Claudia, are we ready to go there? Yes, Chef. Okay. I sauce with a spoon, not with a ladle, and sauce over the meat and around the meat. Look at that, that's beautiful. Small garnish, a beautiful sauce, a perfectly cooked piece of meat. I'm ready to eat. How about you? Looks great. Girl, right on. Should we go? Hard and fast rules of sauce making. Skim your stock all the time. Strain your sauce all the time. Strain it as many times as you have to to make sure that it's clear and the end result will be perfect and shiny every time. Yeah, can't wait. Good. 
Another perfect addition to making a perfect sauce is butter and cream, two essential ingredients in the sauce kitchen. Starting with the cream, I have a pan of reduced red wine, Cabernet Sauvignon, and sauteed shallots, to which I'm adding my gorgeous veal glass. To make something called a cafe au lait, this is going to reduce just the slightest bit. And the cream is added not only for flavor, but for richness, for smoothness, and to impart like a lighter color, this is going to be a beautiful mushroom sauce. Okay, I'm gonna let that go. Season my veal chop up here, a little chopped rosemary, salt, pepper, fresh cracked black pepper, great flavor. Rub with some extra virgin olive oil. Take it over to my grill. I have reduced, very reduced, fish stock. I'm adding lemon juice. That fish stock started out about a cup. Now it's reduced to a few tablespoons. It's a little brown, doesn't matter. I'm gonna be adding enough butter to this to change the color. A heavy bottom sauce pot is very important. And this is the beginning of a butter sauce. This is an emulsion sauce. It's very popular. It's a perfect com combination and finishing to a fish dish. Now don't be afraid of how much butter is actually going into this pot. This butter is emulsifying the wine and the fish stock. You're only getting a few tablespoons on your plate, so I don't want you to worry about cholesterol and fat and you know, you only live once, so you might as well have a little bit of fun. I don't have to whisk this, I can just sort of spin it around in the pot. I can even just leave it there while I flip my veal chop. I'm gonna turn it one more time actually before I flip it to get some good marks on it. This is going to get a little bit of uh, finely, finely chopped lemon zest. I don't blanch my lemon zest. The oils are the reason why you're adding it. The oils are going to impart a beautiful flavor. Flip my veal chop. Have a look to see how Claudia is doing with these mushrooms here. How's that going? They look good. good. Excellent. Very quick sauce for fish. This is red snapper I have here. Take your pan that you've cooked your fish in. All of these beautiful little brown bits caramelized at the bottom of the pan. Take it back to the heat. This is so easy, it's not even funny. A little splash of Sauvignon Blanc. Let that bubble up. You've already got your fish stock in here. It's, it's basically homemade fish stock that you've got because you've got the juices and the caramelization from the cooked fish. A little bit more butter. A little swirl. How's that veal chop doing over there? It's almost there. Ready to go? Yep. I'm going to add my mushrooms to my cafe au lait. Do you want to bring that veal chop over? Sure. Just cut the string off of that. My fish sauce. The emulsification is already working, ready to go. Some chopped chives. And I can pour it right over top. Perfect sauce. It's quick and easy. Mushroom sauce with cafe au lait. Beautiful. Claudia, are you ready to have a bite? You first. Me first. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. You can have that piece if you want. 
Oh yeah. Mm. Mm. Red goose great. Mm -hmm. mm. I love the yeah. How about the snapper? My favorite sauce is a butter sauce. I think that people think that it's a difficult thing to make. It's a super easy thing to make. You only need a little bit of liquid to emulsify the butter. It doesn't matter if you boil it. You don't have to add cream. You just swirl in the butter. You can finish everything with butter. It's not going to kill you to have two tablespoons of butter on your plate, and it tastes so good, and it goes so far. Not every sauce starts with veal stock or veal glass or butter or cream. Some of my favorite sauces are actually the quickest ones to make. My very favorite sauce for poached eggs or beef tenderloin or anything, or pork tenderloin, I should say, not beef tenderloin, is caramelized onions with caramelized apples. I just put some onions into a, a pan with some melted butter. This is what it's going to look like, this beautiful caramelized onion. Once these are perfectly caramelized, I'm adding my Granny Smith apples. And these are going to just sit and caramelize and cook down. They're going to hold their shape because they have quite a bit of, uh, of sugar in them and they hold their shape very well when they're cooked. Another really quick sauce, very simple, no veal stock, nothing too complicated. I have some roasted peppers here. I'm going to chop these up actually. Roughly chopped. They don't have to look nice, they're just going into the food processor. These have been roasted. They're very easily peeled. Take the skin off here. Takes no time at all. Take the seeds out. There we go. Chop, chop, chop. Right into the food processor. Gets your hands a little dirty, but always have a cloth on your apron. That gets whizzed around. A little chicken stock. Not too much, they have quite a bit of liquid in the peppers as it is. And a little Sauvignon Blanc, right in. That's perfect, just like that, but I'm going to go one step further, put it in my pan that has sautéed shallots in it. I love to use shallots in all of my sauces. I think they add a really nice flavor. This is just going to warm up here. And how's that for a quick sauce? What, 30 seconds or so? Very, very quick sauce. Again, a tarragon tomato sauce. Shallots go into a pan with olive oil. You can use shallots garlic if you wish. Shallots are more of a mild flavor, so that's what I'm using. Peeled, blanched, blanched then peeled, seeded, diced tomatoes. Why are they peeled? Because you don't want to have cooked skin of the tomato in your sauce. This is just sort of a refinement thing. You always do that in a restaurant. You don't want to be chewing on tomato skins. It makes the sauce look a whole lot nicer. I'm going to be adding tarragon to this, but not till the end. Salt and pepper. And I think a little bit of wine. You're going to have it, you might as well give it a little bit to your guests too, right? A little salt. That's just going to cook down. Actually, I think I'm going to give it a little splash more. Wine. Splash more of olive oil. And how's that apple sauce doing over there? It's ready. Good, this one's that one's ready. ready. Yeah. That one's yeah. going to cook down. I'm not going to add any tarragon to my sauce yet, because I always add my herbs last. Here's what my apples and caramelized onions look like. That's just gorgeous. I'm adding dried cranberries, just for some texture. A little extra flavor and beautiful color. Rosemary, because I like rosemary. Can I have the salt and pepper too, please? Yes, chef. Salt, pepper. How's that for a fast sauce? Right on to my pork tenderloin. I could put this on a poached egg, pork tenderloin. I could put this anywhere. That's great. Beautiful. Plate up. 
Let's put some parsley into the roasted red pepper sauce. Parsley also goes in at the end. Check the seasoning. We'll add a little salt at the end. And I'm actually going to put it at the bottom of my plate with my beef, just to let the beef sort of sit on it. I'll give it a wipe because I always keep the edges clean. Some of my extra chopped parsley. It has that tarragon sauce. This tarragon sauce is perfect. Tomatoes, the tarragon, the tarragon gets added at the end. It's almost like a salsa, but it's cooked right on top. Oh yeah, a little bit of extra juice. Oh yeah, you'll get to eat it all right. I'm ready to eat. How about you? I'll go with the pork. All right. Seeing as this is, this is your favorite. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that beef, that's perfect. This is the pork. That's great. Right? Amazing. Mm. Mm. Actually, beef will do that last night. Pass the wine, please. Sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one. <laughs> Not just the whole bottle? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, the Upper North Side on my chef's jacket. Uh, I'm the executive chef at the Canadian Consulate General Official Residence. And we represent Canada in New York City and we showcase the talents of Canadians in New York City. And we showcase Canada in New York City and we tell New Yorkers what Canada is all about. Whether it's from food or entertainment or wine or whatever, we showcase Canada in New York City.